So, here's a fun little fact about PvZ3. I thought it was dead. In 2020, it initially released as a soft release, before being completely canned and redone from scratch, featuring tons of assets that were newly created for it, a whole new art style, and tons of new zombies and plants that we haven't really seen since. This version is now completely inaccessible and broadly forgotten. For good reason, mind, but utterly removed and will likely never see the light of day again. Instead, a year and a half later, they release a totally reworked and almost completely redone version. Though after three versions of pre-releases, everyone agreed it was pretty bad. And so after those three releases, each of which were six to ten months apart, it went completely silent. Rumours went around about the app's sunsetting and thus, being cancelled for good. And due to the total radio silence surrounding the game, a lot of people just kinda believed it. It was rumoured the first release was cancelled for being so disliked by everyone, they had to remake it. After all, it was seemingly not a shock that the second attempt would fall to a similar fate. Perhaps being cancelled outright due to the clear cuts made a PZ2's quality over time. Yet, inexplicably, SOMEHOW, I woke up to pings asking me if I could play PZ3. I couldn't. An article went live talking about it a tad bit too early, but out of nowhere, a game I was almost confident died earlier, revived. If it wasn't for that mistake, we'd have been completely blindsided by a whole new PZ game releasing, which says a lot for the quote-unquote advertisement leading up to release. Of course, dropping out of nowhere comes with various problems. Most notably, there is absolutely no expectations, and as previous PvZ versions were so long ago, a lot of people are coming in totally blind, which means a new set of faces are approaching what might just be the most hated PvZ game of all time, for the first time. And to say that it didn't exactly change much, would be an understatement. Fundamentally, it's the exact same game that nobody liked about two years ago. And shockingly enough, that hasn't changed with time. Bit long for an introduction to PvZ3, I realize, but eh. Game's been around for a while, so for me it does make sense to briefly cover this stuff, so you know a bit of a context surrounding this game. For full clarification, PvZ3 is not currently available everywhere. It's simply in soft launch in a few regions. I presume this will receive a full release, as they are already updating and expanding the game, but it is technically not known for sure yet. You can use VPNs, APKs, or other tools to access a game even if it's outside your region, as with other mobile games. In case they release another update before this video comes out, this script is written as levels 151 to 230 have been released. I haven't completed all of PvZ3, but I am aware of all the content that exists within it, so I know which plants and zombies exist, for instance. Though, to be frank, I'm sure just looking at the gameplay in the background, you probably have some questions worth asking. So, without further ado, let's get right into it then, eh? Let's get the cat out of the bag. Choose Your Seeds is gone. You no longer have access to choosing your plants when you enter the level, nor do you even learn which zombies will even be in the level. Sun values are also now in multiples of 1, acting like PvZ 1's 25 cent per sun pickup almost entirely. You are also unable to replay levels. Your only option for a level to play will be the next level in a row, of which there are far more than most of the games thus far. These levels are also far shorter than any other levels in the series. They take a few minutes to complete at most, and barely last any time as a result. It is a rarity to get a truly stable defense, and when your plants mostly consist of pea shooter, that's saying a lot. Even free flag levels can end in the blink of an eye, and sometimes you end levels before even getting a pea shooter on each lane. I personally see this as a change made for the new generation and the limited attention spans, but frankly, who knows. A subtle change in how levels work are the waves themselves. Zombies still come in waves, but the player now has absolutely no control of them. In older games, zombie waves are controlled by the damage dealt to them, so you can solo waves out by dealing no or little damage towards them. 
In PvZ3, waves instead come on a set timer, which changes the approach to most other games. You always want to put firepower on the lanes as soon as possible, and stalling of squashes or tangle kelps never truly helps. Grapes of Wrath are also here, replacing plant food. They charge up for each zombie death, but only slightly, and will also charge up over time. Every now and again they will fill up and fire 7 projectiles on the lawn, each exploding in a 1x1 area. These target random zombies in the field, though don't do a huge amount of damage. It takes 2 to kill a basic zombie, but if all lanes are going down, that's not going to be doing all too much, and its unreliability can be a serious problem. In addition, instead of mowers, you simply have mow, who essentially acts as a single smart mower that changes the lane to a closer zombie functionally working as a far less powerful emergency option. You can let a lane go down late game, but only one lane. And as the levels are so short, this is crucial to PvZ3 levels functioning in any real capacity, as otherwise you just stall the mowers over and over. This change does, however, make it quite clear that the game is far more willing to make you lose. This feels like a good time to point out the live system exists, and either cap a 5 before having to stop playing, or spend coins to get more lives. You may have spotted the line I am trying to draw here. Beating levels will give you taco tickets, which are used to continue a narrative. Sometimes you have choices, sometimes it just straight up falls so you do one thing in particular. Either way, these are almost entirely separate to the gameplay. If mode appears narratively, they will still appear in the levels, for instance, and you will never unlock abilities or things during a main story. Instead, you can view these as a source of power-ups and such if you so wish. Boosts come in the form of things you can activate before the level starts. These come as a rake, which functions exactly as a PvZ1 version, a small amount of starting sun, and a gumball machine that, when tapped or stepped on by a zombie, will deal solid damage to all targets on screen. Think of it as Cabbage pulls plant food in PvZ2, and you get the gist. You also can get infinite lives, bypassing the life system for a short amount of time. You get quite a lot of these in the game, and a guaranteed 15 minute one each day minimum, with extras depending on any events and such. Power-ups are used in-game and come in free flavors. Jalapeno and Cherry Bomb exist acting as they do in PvZ1 and PvZ2, except with infinite damage to defeat any targeted hits. I should note here, PvZ3's spawning system seems to like overwhelming individual lanes, so Jalapeno is actually stronger than normal here. Alternatively, you have Chili Pepper, who targets an entire column, but will only freeze targets, dealing little to no damage towards them. You can unlock power-ups and boosts from several sources, mostly being daily events. Each week in real life will have a cycle of events throughout. Saturday and Sunday will have a Gurbal Pea Shooter that gives you free boosts in future levels, for each level you beat in a row. Monday to Wednesday will put these signs on the lawn, that causes zombies killed in these columns to provide points, which will allow a group to all claim awards, for a few examples. These provide boosters slash power-ups, and are the main way to get them. Of course, weekly the player will also receive deals, constantly. These are the main way the game makes money, and these will sell you power-ups at a discounted price. I'm not going to talk about monetization much here, but I do want to quickly call out how the prices are set up to make the more expensive version seem like a far better deal. After all, they only need to get you to buy once, then you're far more likely to buy more. Notably, these cycle, so there is no emergency rush to grab them, in case anybody was particularly interested in that for whatever reason. You can also buy power-ups and boosters directly for coins you earned from playing in the store, and fully refresh your life on 900 coins when you're out. You may notice that I actually end up with a lot of coins and power-ups by playing normally. While I don't use anything in most levels, you can get a lot of power-ups that are entirely free during certain events, and sometimes just opening the game on a Monday can get you a whole array of power-ups for no additional effort required and you have plenty of coins to buy the power-ups you find yourself using the most. This might be an unfortunate time to bring up a PvZ3, as it so happens, is by far the hardest PvZ game they've ever released. PvZ3 is not a very beginner-friendly game. It's not friendly to veterans either, frankly. This game will spam zombies down at you incredibly fast. 
unlike in previous games, there is nothing throttling the zombie spawn, meaning that especially during the early game, the player has far less control over the game, which really starts at your sun production. Hard. One of the biggest things that is initially quite subtle but becomes far more apparent as you progress, PZ3 enemy spawns are generally lane based. A lot of zombies spawn in the early game, but they tend to spawn in the exact same lane. In a lot of levels later on, 4 to 5 zombies can spawn essentially wave 1, and will all spawn in the exact same lane. Maybe an attempt to make the early game unmanageable, if you want to be polite, but my mind immediately goes to Jalapeno, which feels quite obvious to me as the most likely cause. To me, it seems quite clear that the power-ups have instructed a lot of a design around the game. Most levels spawn at least a single Gargantua by the end, which is an obvious big target to hit with a dedicated power-up. The early games get rushy for the gumball machine to come in handy, or for rakes to come in use, and every single night level becomes far easier with a starting sun boost to make your early game far more manageable. Especially notable the fact that most of the hardest levels I've encountered thus far have been as brutal due to them being set at night. That's not to say they are all equal. Chili Pepper and Rakes are far weaker than the alternatives, but they also just so happen to be incredibly common in deals, with plenty of them making up the value of them. Rakes can instantly kill a zombie, but usually only a zombie, and in hard levels you aren't holding off on a rake usage later. Meanwhile, the Gumball Machine is strictly always better, always dealing enough damage to kill early game threats, while having a wider range and area of effects. Meanwhile, Chili Pepper cannot kill zombies, and Starling is far less viable in PvZ3 due to zombies heading in regardless, so you really aren't ever going to want to use it. Yet, it costs more than a Gumball Machine does, and Rakes cost the same as the other two boosters, allowing them to say they are worth more than they actually are. It comes off to me, at least, like these are the equivalent of stocking fillers. Valueless, realistically, but serve to make a deal feel like, well, an actual deal. Still, power-ups are a constant. You get a lot of power-ups for almost anything you do, after all, which I think to an extent attempts to justify the intense difficulty. But it is important to note for a lot of power-ups, just one won't save you. If things are going wrong, you generally need several. Levels like 145 tend to require you to use several power-ups to bypass properly, as the level overwhelms you just that much, for instance. A lot of the levels that are hard tend to be so due to special zombies, which are generally quite strong, and can all be instantly cleared with power-ups, as you can imagine. Most infamously of a very limited set of specials is Pigeon Feeder, a zombie that spawns clumps of pigeons constantly which are entirely immune to most damage until they land and start attacking your plants, where they can be hit and killed instantly. They can rapidly become a problem, as they will block catapult shots and against most attackers, not killing them instantly can easily result in you being entirely overwhelmed. One of the levels surrounding them, as an example, is level 66, a level which focuses entirely on catapult hitting airborne pigeons, which is a huge problem. Cabbage Pult cannot fire fast enough to overwhelm the pigeons, and if more than one feeder shows up, you are simply screwed entirely. The game doesn't explain this until later, but the only real solution is to use walnuts to block them off, before they reach a point in the lawn they can start spawning pigeons, which is hard to do based on the zombies spam everywhere, especially with imps which can pose to be a nightmare early game. Or you could simply blow them up, after all. They are a noticeable single target, which deals a ton of damage. Not hard to howler, after all. Regardless, this all results in a massive core problem of PvZ3's design philosophy that I imagine most people might have missed. Sure, it's more puzzly, quote unquote, but that's not inherently a flaw. It's brutal as crap, but PZ2 was quite difficult at times and certainly didn't have half these issues. And yes, lacking choose your seed sucks but PZ3's biggest issue is really unrelated. You see, PZ3 never lets you feel powerful, and that hurts the game a lot. When it comes to games, in general, there are a series of feelings that can make you feel, that usually constitute as fun. Some games make you feel like a strategic mastermind, pulling off an insanely tricky strategy, while some games are designed to make you feel like a sly piece of crap pulling all kinds of nonsense and getting away with it all scoff-free. You know the kind. One of the big ones, historically, 
has always been feeling utterly unbeatable. You feel like the man, the guy. Games like Doom follow this formula. All the good Doom games let you feel like an unstoppable brute, blasting apart demons and devils into gribbly little bits. Just look at the original Doom here, and the feeling is still felt. It's what makes those games so fun. To me, and this may sound weird, PvZ as a franchise pulls off the same. The games give you an insane amount of options, and with the sun scaling, the game is built for a more difficult early game, but a more simple and manageable late game. So instead of making the late game hard, they instead make it satisfying to throw the enemies to the wind and let you utterly destroy them. And he's a kicker. Even in PZ2 at its hardest, this is still a thing. Take a Khalees, for instance, a pretty difficult mod that you probably already know of. Once you get used to it, playing Ecclesi levels can feel like you are utterly untouchable, throwing down powerful instas and selling out waves to bring out behemoths with thousands of suns, and then watch them solo half a field. It's an incredible experience, despite the game inherently being really bloody difficult. Because this feeling doesn't come from difficulty, it comes from player power. Something that PZ3 and never grants the player. I feel this is a great time to talk about a small hitch in the plans in PZ3, right now. Out of the 13 plants in PZ3, the most expensive plant is Bong Choi, which costs 6 sun, of the equivalent of 150 sun. It doesn't exactly hit hard, despite being incredibly broken in-game, because it doesn't feel great to use against Bucketheads and the like. And the other plants are far worse. You don't get Repeater, your best damage dealers comes in the likes of Lightning Reed and Pea Shooter, which is never a great sign. Plants like Snow Pea and Bamboo Shoot make this worse. Snow Pea is 4 sun now, but deals reduced damage when compared to Pea Shooter, about half. And Bamboo Shoots does splash damage and minor knockback, but takes 10 years to fire and takes 2 hits to kill a basic. Doesn't exactly feel great. Combine this with a general HP increase with basic zombies, and you have a recipe for disaster. Especially in a game where zombies are spammed insanely hard, Sun feels a struggle to get, and even if those stronger plants existed, they'd be almost utterly useless for those aforementioned reasons. I'm gonna take an utterly unfounded guess, but PZ3 is built on the premise of match-free games, and uses those as a core inspiration for its gameplay. The issue is that match-free games have this feeling of power inbuilt, as insane combos occur from players simply matching pieces, where the entire screen explodes in light when you simply match a few pieces together, with high variance to make this feeling hit hard when it happens. While an oversimplification for sure, I think it's important to note that, by base, PvZ3 doesn't have anything like this, instead leaving you to suffer with nigh unbeatable zombie hordes, with no real chance to gamble a win out of it, unless you really know what you are doing. This just means that in PZ3, it never feels good to win. Your only feeling of power comes from power-ups, but needing to use several to win hardly feels like a good usage of resources. Because you never feel powerful, or truly set by defense, due to the levels even being too short to ever truly be comfortable, well, the core appeal of PZ franchise seems a little lost to me, and as the strategy isn't exactly there either, it's hard to say all too much great about it. To me, this means that us well and truly lost the main appeal of just playing PvZ. That's not to say people can't enjoy it. I don't intend to gatekeep people from enjoying what they enjoy after all, but I personally don't exactly see it. I can't find the enjoyment in PvZ3, beyond a very basic feeling of progress, which is mostly developed by the narrative inside of a game. Speaking of which, that's kinda half the game experience here, so let's talk about it. This game has a plot, technically. Let's start off by saying that it is wholly unrelated to the actual game in almost every single way, so calling it the game's story seems a bit disingenuous as a result. The plot meanders almost around the levels, and the characters never visit the places where the levels take place. In fact, events in the story have zero impact on gameplay, which is a little more noticeable when some of these include your lawnmower getting hacked and being entirely disabled. There's a point where you meet Mo first in the levels, before they get introduced as an actual character, where they try to kill another. That's not to say the story is inherently worthless. It being separate doesn't make it bad by itself. 
Though I do, again, find a story extremely meandery. You often need to go to X location for X thing, and then the characters clean it up, then move on to the next area. Not to say events don't happen, however. There are arcs, so to say, such as Mo getting hacked and needing to be restored, or the gang deciding to send a zombie into war with a rocket-powered chair they happen to be sleeping on, which is really where the entertainment lies. Honestly, if more of these shenanigans happened, I would enjoy the story a lot more. Frankly, I'm not exactly a story writer, but this game is very strangely written at times. I would watch my video on my first dream playing PZ3 for a good example of a game going completely nuts, but long story short, it is heavily implied that one of the characters actively slaughtered planned children, and Zomboss called it a gore den. Very weirdly written. Though, realistically, it's fast been the only time I've seen dialogue like that. It's generally a lot more safe. Crazy Dave goes on an adventure with Patris and Mo, Mo being the law Mo and Patris being their niece, on a grand adventure to build a fog vacuum to clean up Neighborville, as they clear out the area nearby and come across new friends on the journey. Otherwise, it's very standard for a story, I'd argue. It's not terrible, but the player is basically no input and isn't even a real character. You instead mostly watch Dave and friends do random nonsense to kill time, and eat up your tackle tickets. It's not the worst thing ever seen, and I think the art style in these sections really shines through. The art direction is overall quite nice, unless you're playing the actual game. Which is certainly a choice, but it helps these sections stand out more, and they are genuinely unique among the PvZ franchise. You are also encouraged to go through the story, as I do give rewards for doing so. This includes, generally, quite large infinite life boosters, so the narrative does actually flow relatively well assuming you are doing alright, but it is not uncommon to get completely locked off in progress by a particularly difficult level, and to be frank, you are not able to play 24-7. So, eventually, the infinite lives just straight up run out, and you have to play without, bogging down the pace hard and makes the story somewhat hard to follow. I should also note that these are very fan y to a specific source. Of all things, the PVZ comics. Most characters here are from the comics, and they clearly have implied plans to add new characters from them. Patris, Tugboat, and even this ugly pig dog thing are all from the comics, with clear plans to add Nate Timely and such after. It's a fun fact, but it barely means anything. Maybe want to develop a pantheon of characters to work with in future PVZ media? And to really get people to like them, they just use comic book characters? I'm not really sure. Regardless, this definitely contributes a unique vibe to PVZ3 that I honestly don't actually hate. Well, unique among the PVZ franchise at least. Not among other games, considering how this game takes quite literally everything from Garnscapes and other match free games like it. Gonscapes is a match-free mobile game, mostly known for the terrible ads. <laughs> Regardless, this game to my knowledge popularized the classic story structure of many mobile games, where in between levels, you get resources to continue the main story, where you usually get access to several options to proceed, and get power-ups for doing so. Needless to say, PZ3 is quite similar to it, but the comparisons go quite a bit deeper than you may initially think. So, remember those grapes? Weird mechanic, you make progress on them through enemy deaths and through time, and activate automatically when it fills. Well, Garnscapes has this wheel, which fills when you get power-ups off, and when full, automatically places one of these balls, that kinda remove all pieces of the same color, at a random position somewhere on the board. The power-ups themselves are also very similar to common match-free power-ups, a friend explosion, a lane clear, and a column range ability. In fact, the very position of these power-ups are the same, which is extra interesting as the previous game put them in a wholly different position down here. And having separate boosters which mostly give you bonus at the start of a level? Well, guess what other game just happens to have those? Of course, this goes yet deeper. You know how on different days you get different boosts? Guess what game also does that? including the exact same power boost gimmick, where playing levels in a row can give you extra boosters as long as you keep winning. 
all the story stuff is from Garnscapes, a game where the entire plot is restoring an old garden, going place to place, and adding new stuff as you go. Even minor stuff like time skips are also done in Garnscapes, even newspaper appear, with no element of how Peavesley 3 presents the story being unique. It's really hard to emphasize just how similar these really are, and how absurd it honestly gets. When I say that Peavesley 3 doesn't have an original bone in his body, I do truly mean it. Like, this goes so far that even some of his gimmicks can be traced back to this game if you try hard enough. I think it's important to note that this completely shocked me at first, but honestly more so comes across to me personally as just, well, sad. Realistically, this isn't even an issue of PvZ3, but the very nature of mobile games and how far they have really devolved. Realistically, Garnscape clones are a dime a dozen these days, and what PvZ3 tries to do is far from special in taking these elements. It's unfortunate how all these games are so similar. Though, frankly, I'm not really upset about this whole ordeal, which may seem to be a bit of a surprise to many, but honestly, I don't really care that much. Because to be real here, PZ3 being bad shouldn't be a surprise. And furthermore, PZ3 doesn't really matter. To a lot of people, PZ3 was a rude awakening and a sudden shift in game quality for those who have played most of the games at release and not much else. If you've been around for the past year though, you know this isn't quite true. I think PZ2 especially makes this obvious, but the past year updates have been, to put it lightly, weak. And ever since Battle for Nearville released, this game hasn't exactly had an update that really did all too much, while this game has been broadly stuck in the same state. In fact, the last new set of zombies were added back in 9.4.1, or December 13th of 2021. And since then, we've only a few zombies that either exist in PvZ1 or PvZ3, or Nutcracker, who looks like this. It's very clear to me that PopCap lacks the manpower to create the great experiences that were so iconic in the times of old. And frankly, if you think PvZ2 is bad, there's probably only been a single good PvZ game ever released. So being shocked that PvZ3 is bad just seems, well, dumb. To me, PvZ3 just doesn't matter. It's not trampling on a legacy of a once great series or anything. That would be PvZ Match, a cheap game the community initially thought was straight up a knockoff, yet is an official spin off to the series, acting exactly as the name implies. It even has the exact same Garnscape systems. No, really, they legitimately made two games with almost identical systems of Garnscapes in the PvZ franchise. I guess that's becoming the new PvZ thing. And to be honest, I don't think PvZ 3 is irrevocably terrible. There's enough here that I can see some people enjoying it more often mindedly, and in the modern mobile market, it's not the worst thing on earth. And to be real here, it's not as if PC games historically have always had great launches. I feel the need to remind people that on release, PC2 was actively terrible. It had an entirely different system to unlock content, that required an ungodly amount of grinding, and lacked a lot of key features we have now, such as no zombie bosses or gargantuas. It's not completely implausible that pz 3s issues can be fixed, and at a glance it doesn't seem impossible they will attempt to nurse some of the hardest levels down. And as far as I can tell, plans like Sunflower already have received buffs since I played, so I'm sure the game will improve as time goes on. Though I genuinely don't care, personally. Look, we live in a world of repetitive game sequels and spin-offs, as companies are beginning to double down on IPs they already own, instead of developing new ideas. So frankly, I'm not that bothered that one of them is bad. It didn't come out of nowhere for me. I knew it was gonna be bad, what, four years ago? So it'd be weird for me to be bothered. And realistically for me, I have been playing new Plant vs. Zombies for years now, in between fan games and mods, which have become more and more popular over time. So for me, wasting time playing and looking at PvZ3 is just that, a total waste of time. There's better things to talk about than a single crappy game. This video is honestly inherently kinda pointless, because any analysis can't really provide more than a glance I'll play can't tell you. Do I need to explain why having levels that last less than a minute is a bad idea? Do I need to explain why relegating instant plants like Cherry Bomb or Halopin into Parups only results in a cheap experience? Do I really need to explain why having night levels with early waves that look like this, without Sun Shroom or Puff Shroom, could be problematic. 
Do I really need to explain to you the zombie design looks a little off? When gargantuas look like this? PvZ3 doesn't matter because there is no real reason to dedicate time to it. There's no interesting insights to glean from it, there's nothing of worth to gain from playing it, and there's certainly nothing worth spending money on here. It's just a bad game as far as I'm concerned. I don't care if that is linked to the PZ franchise, as franchise loyalty is a lie meant to sell more sequels, and I don't really care about PopCap, as the original employees who made the games I actually care about are, as far as I know, long gone. And the rule of PZ2's credits show that who works it now likely aren't happy with doing so. PZ3 is a product created to make money out of a beloved franchise. Nothing more. And frankly, I don't think it's worth my breath to care about a product any more than I already have a creator's video. I'll get back to playing with PZ games that are worth playing. The ones created by people who I know for sure care about these games and making a fun experience. The fan games and mods created by fans for fans. I'd rather play a game than be marketed to. With my final force out of the way, I think it's a decent spot to say that Christ making this script is hard. Frankly, I've made this video more so out of obligation than anything I'd rather want to do. And honestly, it's really difficult too, because I feel obligated to try to say something of substance out of a game that I genuinely believe has nothing worth saying in a video like this. Hopefully you learn something from this, because God knows that I am not making another PZ3 video, unless it gets pushed hard. Like, they fix a darn thing or do something so stupid, I have no choice but to comment on it. To be honest, it kind of sucks me too. I've been trying to move away from being so negative all the time and talk about the stuff I actually like. So people are dropping in immediately this year and dismantling all that is not ideal. Again, I already knew it was bad, so it was not pleasant to come back to suddenly see it show up while I was trying to focus on more positive videos this year. Then I took up half a year this far. Pain. Whatever. I think a more interesting aspect of all this has been the committee reaction, which I was originally going to talk about at length, but cut, because I felt telling people what to think was a bit, eh, follow myself essentially. To talk for a bit about being too direct, a lot of people seem to have ideas to fix PvD3, but I don't understand the core issues of the game itself, because they haven't been able to consider the deeper ramifications for actions, and the underlying why certain decisions were made. Think, choose your seeds, and so forth. Still, PZ3 releasing is a big deal, and I hope that I made my fortunate clear as day. It's been a pretty long video, but it seems that is a theme this year. Turns out my next few videos are likely to be just as long. Maybe my next video will be shorter just to break that up. Uh, we, we shall find out together. I, I, I don't know yet. R regardless, this has been Creeps, and have a good one.